The Truth the Girls. The Truth the Girls. Hi everyone. So uh, today I wanted to give you some news about GMOs. Okay, first of all, there are six new foods that are being approved as uh, GMOs that are gonna be you know, on the market. Six new GMO crops that may soon hit your dinner table. Basically, in summary, it's, um, it's really kind of a lot of the same old stuff. It's uh, mostly soy and corn. At this point, nearly all the corn and all the soy is already GMO. So if you're, if you're avoiding GMOs, you're probably avoiding those things anyway, unless they're labeled organic. Uh, the one on here that's new is uh, Okanagan non-browning apples. I mean, new is in terms of, in terms of um, it being a, a totally different, you know, fruit or vegetable or whatever, a different crop. Do people really care when they bite into an apple if it if it stays brown? I mean, if it stays white or it goes brown, isn't isn't the fact that it's not GMO more important to most people? I would hope it is. I'll, I'd take a brown apple over a GMO apple any day. Anyhow, that's the one that's new. It's Okanagan non-browning apples. And by the way, people have asked me about the produce codes. And um, if it's four digits and it starts with a four, it's normal, just regular conventional stuff. If it's five digits and it starts with a nine, it's organic. And apparently, if it's five digits and it starts with an eight, it's GMO. But right now, most of the GMO stuff is in the processed food. Like I mentioned, the corn and the soy also cotton, cottonseed, and canola. Uh, those are all totally GMO, and they're mostly in, in oils, and so you, you find those in the processed foods. Uh, GMO fresh produce, I've never seen it. I don't know if you guys have, but you don't see much of it in, in any case, but you would be, you would want to look for that five digit code starting with an eight if you're trying to keep an eye out for GMO fresh produce. And the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about was uh, California's Proposition 37, which is on the November 6th ballot, which is a mandatory labeling of genetically engineered food initiative. So it would uh, force all these companies to label their foods as GMO and forbid them to put words on them on packaging such as natural. However, there would be some exemptions such as anything that's organic um, or, or even also things that contain only very small amounts of GMO in them. Also restaurant food, alcoholic beverages, and pharma crops. They say um, anything that's administered for treatment of medical conditions. So that's kind of concerning because that's probably gonna be big and, and bigger business uh, down the road. It could be anything from like a, a corn that uh, basically sterilizes you or it could be some kind of vaccine or it really could be anything. And those would be exempt from labeling. Uh, in the camp uh, for the right to know, uh, pro Proposition 37, um, Mercola Health Resources has donated uh, $1,100,000, which I think is awesome. Um, in the camp against the proposition, heading the list are, uh, of course, Monsanto, DuPont, Pepsi, and other companies like that. And they're making huge donations, of course, of $4 million and plus, and, and, and some many of uh, over a million dollars. So those who are fighting for our right to know are in for a, a big fight up against the corporatocracy. Those who are against the proposition, uh, they say that this would just create a lot of bureaucracy and that it would also raise the cost of food. Um, well, that's probably true. It probably would raise the cost because they'd have to meet all these new labeling laws. Uh, it says it's full of special interest exemptions and it authorized shakedown lawsuits. I mean, of course, you know, DuPont and Monsanto are going to be against this. They're going to come up with some reason, you know, why, why you shouldn't have this law. And uh, here's some more of the arguments by the uh, anti-Proposition 37 camp. Pro-Proposition 37 ad is mostly factual but is misleading. Well, they're basically saying that the ad is comparing it to Agent Orange and tobacco and that there's no evidence that GMOs are as harmful as Agent Orange or tobacco. Well, it's, you know, they have different harms that they cause, obviously. Um, and, you know, uh, yeah, you could probably eat a little bit of GMO here and there. Probably wouldn't have a really huge effect on your health. And you guys know that I'm totally against GMOs, obviously, but I'm sure I've eaten them. I mean, I've had corn chips and I've had processed food and I've had, you know, so I've had GMOs. And, um, you know, it won't kill you outright, uh, but we really don't know what the long-term effects are. 
in lab animals, GMOs have been shown to do things like uh, cause infertility or cause deaths in the newborns, also cause organ damage and even brain shrinkage. So obviously they're harmful to health and in the environment they're also very dangerous. The, the pesticides that they use, they've, because of those now we have super weeds. Also, the, the, the GMOs target certain pests, but then the pollen blows all over the place and monarch butterflies end up dying, and bees end up dying because of these things. And uh, well, when you start killing all the bugs, things don't pollinate, things don't grow, the, the things that eat the bugs, well, they, they have nothing to eat and, and all kinds of weird things happen. So it's not a defoliating agent, but, but it's, it's very bad for the environment. So I wanted to let you know about Proposition 37 and if you're in California, um, this would be a good opportunity to vote for the labeling of GMOs and um, yeah keep an eye out for the GMO apples and uh, remember that five digits starting with an eight is GMO produce and we might see we might be seeing more of that soon so keep an eye out for that and um, well that's it thanks for listening to me and I'll see you next time. The reason they won't go brown is they're genetically en engineered to have uh, the enzyme that's responsible for browning turned off.